Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Bird, here at StopStrugglingNow.com. And tonight, are you buying assets? A lot of people still don't know what those assets are, but stocks, real estate, other businesses, etc. And welcome. Stop struggling now, gear. Check. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. <laughs> back ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you so much for being here first of all please share the videos because you never know who you'll be able to help and smash that like button so the youtube guys know that a few people are watching and we're in the loop it has started now speaking of his has started let's talk about the situation at hand let's go look at the stock market shall we i haven't already queued this up but let's go look I wonder what's been happening. It looks like green. Green across the board for futures. Pretty sure it's green today. I'm pretty sure it might be green tomorrow. Some of you may be saying, Eric, why are you a little giddy about this? Well, I love it when things come together. For different reasons, people choose different things. I had a conversation with MDA once again about stocks. And so I thought today, SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream was the perfect opportunity to discuss buying assets, which are securities, which are stocks, bonds, anything along those lines. It's green, small numbers, but nonetheless, green. It looks like S&P has hit its all-time high. I believe it was 4561. That's looking good. Dow Jones is not near its all-time high, but it's only a few thousand, three or four thousand below its all-time high. No big deal on that. NASDAQ, once again, this is with 5.25 to 5.5 federal funds interest rate. It's amazing that the stock market is going up with these high interest rates. So it has nothing to do with it. Does it or does it not? Companies making profits, calling it inflation. That's a whole nother story. We won't get into that tonight because again, I'll start going off on a little rant. But what I wanna go do is look at the markets themselves, ladies and gentlemen. Let's. And today, once we get to it, it looks like, is this the markets? Yes, S&P, we already know. Well, we don't know, no, actually. And I see my computers. I think we do. And I see something right now. Okay. Well, it doesn't look that easy. Here we go. Okay. S&P plus 33. NASDAQ plus 159, Dow Jones plus 203, bingo, green, as expected, year to date, I wonder what's happened there, this is very, very interesting, now, here's the reason why this is interesting to me, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think, this is a participation live stream, as always, but make sure you share the videos and smash the like button. Also, how can I forget? It's Black Friday. Before I forget, we have to go show some love for Professor Auntie Val. We have to go to Beachfront Java. Go there if you love coffee or tea. Go to Beachfront Java. Get the Black Friday special, 20% off. Hurry while it lasts. That's right. You heard me. 
Go over there, order the 20% off, get the Black Friday 20% off special. Premium blended beans from the best regions around the world. One pound, half pound, three pounds, five pound sealed bags of fine ground, drip ground, or those whole beans. And if you love tea, then go get that tea, ladies and gentlemen. All right, go get what you need for the winter time. Get prepared now, especially with 20% off, especially with premium blends, and especially with free shipping in the United States. Not to Hawaii, not to Alaska, but for the rest of you, United States, free shipping. Go over there and order today. All right, beachfrontjava.com, and you'll get the promo code there. Just go look at it. All right, show some love, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here we go back to. George's Charles is in the house this evening. Welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. He has the icon next to his name, which means he's a member of the channel. I greatly appreciate it. He says, hey, all his tagline, I smell money. He's exactly right. He smells the money. It's flowing up, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because even he said, let me get in on some of this stock game. Let me get in on some of this dividend investing. Let me get 20, 30, 40% returns on my money because they, the Yule Max ETF guys, they are giving away some of the greatest returns known to man in this environment. Imagine when the federal interest rates go down and the stock market keeps going up. They have to pay less yield because now, the stock price will probably go up a little bit, which means the yields go down. But that doesn't really matter. They pay out the same dividends. Those who are in using the money already, now you get 20%. You reinvest that 20%, reinvest it, reinvest it. You're making money while you sleep. That's what we talk about here. So remember, get your pen, pads, and papers ready because he smells money. I smell money. You should be smelling money. And we're not talking about using credit cards. We're not talking about going out here, getting into debt. We're talking about assets that pay you. All right. Victor Marrero is in the house. He's one of them guys that loves assets that pay him. Welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. He has the icon next to his name. Thank you so much, Victor Marrero. And he brings his tagline. Hello, all. Let's do this. And that's what we try to do every Monday. Money making Monday live stream. This is the no guru zone, ladies and gentlemen. All you need is a pen, pad, and paper. We don't have a club that you can join. We don't have any stock tip programs. No, we just give it to you like it is. You want to earn 20% or more returns? Then you go check out yieldmaxetfs.com ASAP. You want to do regular stocks? Well, I'll give a few like I always do. The ones everybody knows, AGNC. These are REITs. If REITs can operate in this environment with high interest rates, imagine what's going to happen when they reduce the interest rate. That just means you have locked in your 18, 15, 16% return because they're going to still be able to give out dividends. So AGNC. Now we'll go to the high risk maneuvers. You're going to have to go study and make sure that you want to check out news and updates and information just in case these companies don't want to give out dividends again. Let's face it, that's free money. That's profits that they're giving out most of the time. So I'll give these to you. But remember, go study ORC. They voted to issue dividends this month. All right. So they are paying attention. ORC, even though it's like 20 percent plus, you got to pay attention. ARR. All right, over 20% again. IEP, which is the Carl Icon Group. I don't get it. They are in automotive. They're in fashion. It's a conglomerate. It's not really a REIT. That's like 20%. Imagine what's going to happen if interest rates come down. Whether it's this month or shall I say December, whether it's February, we're off to the races. All right? They're not going to go down to 2% inflation rate. You can forget that. They're not trying to help you. Again, I keep trying to tell you guys, look, nobody's coming to save you, all right? You better get used to it. Otherwise, you're going to get left behind on this round. You're not going to be able to catch up, ladies and gentlemen. At least you have the knowledge, though. So then 
you will be able to always turn it around. Knowledge is part 50% of it. Joe Nay, welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. He too has the icon, which I greatly appreciate, a member of the channel. And he says, hello, SSN Nation, and good evening. I'm here. I'm getting to it. Keeping it 100. Thank you so much, Joe Nay. I appreciate you being here and the support. Appreciate it. Mo Betters in the house. Another investor is here. Welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream with the icon next to his name. And he brings his tagline. What's up, E? It's all good, man. What's up, SSN Nation? We in the building. And I should say we in the building more than you guys know. You're in the building. Come along for the ride. The ride's about to get a whole lot better. And I'm not just talking about stocks, real estate, but we talking about businesses, ladies and gentlemen. And got the notification and trailer. Thank you so much. The first person that's mentioned that. I appreciate that. That's one person. And I smashed the like button. Let's get to it. Exactly right. That's what we try to do here. You want to earn 10%, 11% on your money? Well, go see JEPI. Talk about JEPQ. We can even talk about Dynex. D-Y-N-E-X is a whole stock in itself. Go look at them. You like 12, 13%? Go check them out. You want to do lower risk? J-E-P-I, J-E-P-Q. You can even check out Dynex. Let me know what you think. Make comments down below or during the live stream. Either way. See, we actually tell you that things that you can go research. We're not telling you to join our clubs. You're getting the information straight off the top. We don't have books to read. We don't have none of that. We don't have a pre-programmed scenario. This is what we do. All right. So that's how we do it. All right. Now, you just need your pen, pad, and papers. Or watch some of the other videos. Like our man Mo here. Man, oh man. I'm uh, very proud of him. Victor Morrell, guess what else is kicking with the market being on fire? Our dividend monthly income. See, this is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm exactly talking about. Continue to add to the bag. Exactly. We got our duffel bag of cash, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. We don't show duffel bags of cash. You know why? Because we don't keep our money sitting in all the duffel bag. All the money ain't sitting in the duffel bag. You have to have money, make money for you. It's got to be in assets that pay you. So it can't just be in a duffel bag. It can't be in the backyard. You got to utilize the bullets. Those are bullets. They're in the chamber. They're loaded. Are you going to use them wisely? Or are you going to go out here and just dump it like some of these guys that fill up their bullets and then they go to the shooting range, pop off a few hundred, few thousand rounds, throwing money out the window when you could have been putting in thousands of dollars into stocks that pay you for potentially the rest of your life or a business or a real estate deal, assets that pay you back. That's what we want. And Victor Morrell's right on the market, because right on the money, because we talked about yieldmaxetfs.com. Okay, yieldmaxetfs.com. Go there, first stop. Check out some of them stocks that I just mentioned to you. Second stop. All right. They're very simple. It's not that hard. All right. There's uh, Webull, there's Robinhood, and whatever other brokerage accounts you want to use. They have all those stocks that we mentioned in their brokerage. So you would be able to buy. All right. Down below in the description box, get your free stocks from Robinhood and Webull. If you haven't already, please use the links down below. Real estate wise, well, my pen is ready, says Joe Nay. Pen and paper is ready. Thank you so much, Joe Nay. We gave out a little bit. We gave out some of the future because people want to know. I'm going to go back to this because, again, I had a little talk discussion on one of our little under one of the videos. And there's reasons people are thinking that they're going to short the market. Now, one of the reasons they're going to short the market is because of things like this. This is a common theme, right? Look at look at here. So 
uh, let's just do a five year. And in fact, let's do max. See this right here, December 17th, 4620, 4662, January 14th. It's rising back up in case you've been sleeping. This is what has been happening. Why? Because the Federal Reserve has been pumping money into the market. You guys know what happened in 2008, 9. We had a little crash, but then they pumped up trillions of dollars into. And then you know what happened in 2016, 2017 for three or four years, $8 trillion. Some of it, half of it pumped into the stock market. They can do their buybacks. Then, you know, in 2021, they had stimulus money. So again, pumped up the market. Now the re interesting scenario is why did the market dip? Well, interest rates. It was of concern. Inflation was allegedly high, but not really. It was over high. It was 15, 20%, but telling you 10. Meanwhile, they start increasing the interest rate. And here we are in 2023, and we're back on the rise, even though it's a funny thing. The interest rates are even higher. Why is the stock market moving up? Could it be because federal uh, Jerome Powell was actually our friend? I told you he whispered in my ear, did I not a week or so back? I mean, do we have to keep doing this over and over? I told you he whispered in our ear and said, hey, we're friends. Check it out, E. We're friends. I got you. You don't have to worry. We're saying there's hardly any inflation. It's all good. It's not, we're not going to tell you it ain't two or three percent, but it's okay. It hasn't risen. This is giving a signal to you. Eric, just wait for the signal. I got the signal. It was received. Inflation is okay. We are not worried. That means we're not going to increase interest rates, which is stock market positive. And then when he says, Eric, it's all good, man. So that just means in the next three months, to me, stocks, uh, they're going to reduce the interest rate. And what do you think is going to happen with stocks? They're going to go up. What do you think is going to happen with real estate? Same thing. And what do you think is going to happen when you can borrow money for cheaper rates? That means people are going to buy more stocks or buy businesses or buy companies but it is not going to be at a rapid rate for until they drop it down about another two points. Then things will start kicking up in overdrive. But it's not too late for you, ladies and gentlemen, because you are part of the SSN Nation and you know you need to get those assets like all year long. It's going to be December in about 10 days. Don't mess around. James Way, welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. He has the icon as well. Thank you so much for that. He says, hello, all. Got the notifications. That's two people looking under the bed for my duffel bag of cash. Of course, because the rent is too damn high. And the rent is still too damn high, says James Way. But guess what's happening? The rent is starting to come down in certain parts of the United States, which is a great thing because it was unsustainable, because people eventually is going to be like, uh, I'll just live with friends. I'll just move back home. I'll just live in a communal situation. You guys can charge whatever you want, but it's going to be sitting empty for two or three months. And the homeowner who has their home sitting empty, a lot of you keep forgetting, a lot of people have insurance rates that have increased. They've had their uh, property taxes increase, and a lot of people, they have to pay $1,000, $1,500 per month while the house is sitting there empty. So, and the HOA. And a lot of people are sitting there like, wait a minute, nobody's renting this place after four, five, six months. That means I, I just had to pay six Gs, seven Gs. I can't, I, I no, this was not part of the plan. So they have to start reducing rates. Something had to give sooner or later. Unfortunately, it took like two years. But here's the point. The signal has already been sent out. The bat signal from Jerome Powell for everybody that's investing. He's sending the signal. Clearly, they are not increasing the interest rates. Not next month. Not the month after. Not the month after that. They're not increasing. them. That's a green light as far as I'm concerned. So bring out that duffel bag of cash. Put them in the assets. And you're going to be awfully happy. Now, speaking of assets, again, 
businesses, creating, buying. And if you can, I have a, have a little heart to heart talk with you guys in about eight to 10 days. That's right. I'm going back to the DR and there's a reason. Remember when you could flip properties in America easily. What I mean by that is double closings was a simple thing. No big deal. Chicago title, first title. It doesn't matter who it was. It wasn't a problem. It wasn't none of this. You had to close, pay for it, do it and all this. It was just like a single seamless transaction. They stopped that in a lot of states. You know why? Because when the OCs found out about it, ordinary citizens, they were like, hold up a second. Are you telling me a person could go out, find cheap property, and maybe the person has to fix it up, spend five grand or 10 grand. And after they do that, they can make a hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars. And they didn't even hold it no more than 30 days. And all they did was advertise it at that price. They haven't even done anything but pay interest only for a few months. And then they have the other person pay for it. And then they never had to have the 200,000 or 250,000. Are you kidding me? We can't have that. We got to stop that. So in certain states, they did. Okay, but guess what? In certain countries, the art of innovation, using your mind, they still allow it. So come to find out, Dominican Republic is similar. They like, hey, does it really matter where the money comes from when you're actually closing? No. So if you have a corporation, you're going to love this. I can't even talk to you about it right now. You know why? Because I will talk to you once it's a completed assignment. So foreign corporation, stay tuned. All right. It's going to go down and you guys are going to learn all about what's going to happen and what you can do and why all the top dogs have offshore businesses. You have advantages. And you don't have to sell your business to sell some of the assets under the business. You can sell stocks of the business, which is very interesting. I have to say, it's going to be wild. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I, I can't talk about it right now until we get with the accountants and everybody, but it's going to be wild. E. White's in the house. Another investor is here. Another Nobody's coming to save you understanding. Another emerging millionaire is in the house. He says, good evening, SSN family with the icon. And welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. And he says, don't forget to share and hit that like button. And he's the CEO of his life, ladies and gentlemen. He's taking the bull by its horns. He's taking this very seriously. He's mapped out a plan. This is what you need to do, ladies and gentlemen. He's paying attention to the landscape. And it's happening right before your very eyes while I'm sitting here in November of 2023 saying the same thing I said damn near a year ago and the year before that and the year before that. But I'm glad you guys are here for the ride because you can actually see it happen right before your eyes. Paul Castillo, welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. And another man, he's on a mission. He's out here handling real estate deals himself and he's here. And he brings his tagline. Hello, SSN Nation. I got the notification. Let's do this. That's what he's been doing. Hey, man, I'm very proud of all you guys out here. Paul Castillo, you're one of them as well. You guys have paid attention. You have put your feet in the water. You said, hey, hold on. It's making a little bit of sense. And now sitting back and in a year, year and a half, two years, going to reap the rewards, whether it's equity, sell it, make 30, 40, 50, 100 Gs, whatever the case may be, or have money coming in for the rest of your life. You have options. A lot of people won't have options. 64% of the population won't have options because they're living paycheck to paycheck and they can't free up enough money to get the assets. So what do you have to do? Well, unfortunately, you have to bite the bullet for a few months maybe and pay down your debt where you can free up some of that that you're paying for the debt. You can buy assets. That's all I can tell you. That's what you're going to have to do. You have to make a decision now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're on that border 
If you have enough extra flow, then use that to invest. In fact, you know what? You know what the rich guys do? Some of the people here are doing what the rich guys do. They said, let's see, I have $10,000 a month. I have $5,000 a month at my disposal that I normally spend a thousand at that liability, a two thousand at that liability. Maybe I don't need that car that I'm spending eight hundred dollars per month on. I got two others in the driveway. Maybe I don't need that. But once you realize spending upwards of sixty percent or fifty percent, leaving yourself what you would call broke, but you have money into assets that give you a return, you're not broke. That's the thing. If you have $5,000 coming in per month and you're trying to put $2,000 into something that gives you a return on investment, you're not broke. Yeah, you might be cash poor at the moment, but that's $24,000 that's making money for you somewhere, especially if you put in the stock market and you're earning like 20%. That's eight Gs a year. So now you would have $32,000 in somewhere that can earn another 20 to 30 percent because you're reinvesting so now all of a sudden in two years you've almost doubled your money that's incredible when you think about it that's short term nobody's saying you have to wait forever but when you get these high rate of returns these are not going to last forever when they reduce the interest rate they have no incentive to give out the same amount of money of profit they're going to say, hey, man, why don't we take back some of this profit and let these guys earn 13 percent or 10 percent. But that money you already put in, that is going to be earning the same amount. And it's reinvestment money that matters. Businesses, same thing. All right. Now you talking with the corporations. I'm aware. James Way, he says, now you talking with the corporations. I am aware. Yes, James Way. I finally said okay let's go let's go a little offshore it's been a few years i've never actually shown anybody real offshore paperwork so the real offshore paperwork it's not going to be a dummy thing i'll show real offshore paperwork in 2024 kind of it'll be 2023 probably 2024 but we'll show the real off anyway next 60 days you don't want to miss this Foreign corporations, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, I will say this. My man, Johan Confidante. One stop shop. We have the accountants. We have the lawyers. All right. First two guys you need to see. We have the guys that's setting up the stocks and the corporation properly for the Dominican Republic. All in house. So we're set and it's going to be geared toward real estate, by the way. Of course it is. Of course. I said, OK, I'm coming out of retirement. What the hell? I might as well do the damn thing. You're going to let me do this. This is my forte. Let's do it. So James Way, stay tuned over the next 60 days. It's probably going to be 45 days this kind of thing. But you guys are going to know all about. It. In fact, you're going to know more than what most people will. So this is one of the things, the no guru zone you guys learn right here. Victor Marrero, he says, FYI, Robinhood is now paying 5% interest on any uninvested amount. He is correct. ETS for gaining appreciation. Hey, he's got it. Thank you very much, Victor Marrero. NVIDIA, NVDA, QQQ, SPY, SPY, Tesla. Hey, you know, here's the thing. Anybody paying attention to all the tech stocks? Why are they going up? I mean, this is this is to me, people are saying technicals and they're saying this is going to happen. I'm going to short the market. I'm like. At this present environment, all the signals they're giving off, there is no sign that these guys are going to raise interest rates. None. If there was stocks would be going down. It's that simple. There's no technical anything. In my opinion, you guys can study along because somebody's going to see this video two months from now and they're going to be like, when was this made? November 20th? What's happening? He was saying stocks were going to go up November 20th. And how it is January 15th. And the Fed just said. We think, again, inflation is chilled. We have no problem. 
And then in February, they have no problem. We're going to reduce the interest rates, whether it's 0.25 or 0.5. Either way, any reduction means it's all a go. And you are right in the middle of it, ladies and gentlemen. And some of you better get on board. Brian P., welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. He has the icon next to the name, and he is responsible partially for making it happen here. And he says his tagline, hello, Eric. I hope all is well with you. Hello, SSN family. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know it all. My man, Victor Marrero, my man, Brian P., these guys were talking about yield max ETFs like Damn, last year almost now. It was like, okay, yeah, yeah, 20%, 30%, 25%. Yeah, that's a minute. Then you now, eight months later, it's like, hold up, wait, it is 40%, 35%. Oh my God, what's happening? These guys are earning on their money this incredible return because they're reinvesting. And now it's locked. It's just going to keep churning and churning and churning. And uh, Brian P., once again, uh, thanks again with the help of others here that got us on the Yield Max ETFs train. All right. So it's still a train, ladies and gentlemen. It's going down the track. Nobody's stopping it. All right. And quite frankly, if, the, if they reduce interest rates like I think is going to happen, even if it's not my predicted December, okay, fine. But the point is, they're not going to increase it. So therefore, the stock market can deal with no increases and they love Love when a bank says, oh, we're going to give you 5.5%. You don't have to put your money in the treasury. You don't have to do anything like that. We're going to give you 5%, 5.5. In fact, you're one of our better customers. We'll give you 5.95. So what does that do? Okay, in case you don't know, they like to leverage their cash. They like to leverage their money. So if you had, let's just use a $500,000 in the bank. I think you can call up the bank and be like, hey, can I get some favorable terms here for some some borrow of a couple hundred thousand? I want to start a buy into a business, an existing business that's going to be making me like, I don't know, $50,000 a year. Can I tap into that? And they're saying, well, you're one of our preferred customers. Of course you can. In fact, we're going to give you interest only for the first year. You're going to be like, are you serious? Okay. This is what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, and is happening. Don't be fooled. Leverage is what the top 10 percenters do. They treat debt differently because their debt is on assets, while most people, 64% of the population, their debt is on liabilities. Huge difference. Huge. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go. Eric, do you see a day where cryptocurrency will bounce back how it was two years back? I don't, I don't, I don't know how to respond to that, quite frankly. If you are referring to crypto other than names of BTC and symbols ETH, no, I'll just put it that way. That's the only thing that's going to happen. BTC, ETH. Why? It's plain and simple. We have the stock guys going in, getting uh etfs for bitcoin ethereum that means you the ordinary citizens who put in their money into 401ks they're using your money to buy those ethereums and bitcoins they're not going to mess around with joe blow coin that'd be high risk why do that you're going to put your money in where all the other etfs are putting their money in to pump up the price quickly so my point is I don't see how it's going to be two years back stuff happening. Sure, there might be a breakthrough of a few, but I would. why risk it? We've seen all the disasters that have occurred. So why not just buy the BTC? Simple, Bitcoin, Ethereum, that's it. No time to play around. Sure, you can win on some coins that come out. You bought cheap, it rose a thousand percent and it you know goes nowhere. Sure, you can do that, but just stay in the big boys because it's going to go up. Again, it's going to be considered an asset. Once again, though, it doesn't give you a return on your money. So in the Stop Struggling Now nation, that's not an asset. There's no return. So the only return is if it goes up and you sell it. 
but sitting there, there's no return. So this is going to be very interesting, but I will guarantee you this. I, I pretty much know BTC, Ethereum is going to rise. No way around it. Grayscale, BlackRock, whoever else knows, they're going to be, have ETFs with Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars going into the buy and Bitcoin's going to be halved next year. A recipe for clearly an increase in price. You have two worlds colliding, ETFs coming out, having coming out, reducing the amount of BTC. And then you have this couple hundred million trying to buy a hundred million dollars, 200, 300, 400 million dollars to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum. Clearly, the price is going to rise. That's why we have a kickstart now, because people realize the obvious. It's going to rise. Having it's going to rise. There's going to be less coins. And now you're going to have these companies who have a uh, hundred million dollars laying around like it's pennies saying, ah, just buy three hundred million dollars worth. Call it a day. So there you go. That's what's going to happen, Paul Castillo. If I'm wrong, I, I, I seriously doubt it. Buy some yield, Max. Exactly. Make some money. Exactly. Make your money work for you. In fact, let's go look and see. I've been talking about you, Max. Why don't I just go to the screen? Why don't we just go over here? Why don't we just go? In fact, hold on. Before I do that, why don't we just do some other things first? I talked about AGNC. Look at where they're sitting. 16.42%. That's outrageous. Outrageously good. All right. In fact, there's something I didn't mention, which more maybe 13 percent or somewhere thereabouts gets you, you know, feeling like maybe it's not too good to be true. Here you go. 14.63 percent. That's in L.Y. Here they all are. Not all. But here's some of the guys we mess with. Right. So ORC, again, they were talking about, hey, man, we don't want to keep giving out all this profit. 19.54 percent. That's pretty hefty. All right. ARR also, you know, the the, the, the the stockholders like, hold on, man, 27.57. Hold on. Maybe we don't want to give out all that profit. Why don't we take some off the table? Then you have IEP. Look, look, 24.21. And look at this drop. Crazy. But look at this icon thing. Food packaging, metals, real estate, home fashion, including energy. And it's interesting that this is going down like this. But 24.21 as it's going down. Amazing. All right. So these are the type of things that I talk about every week. You guys can come back. But I mean, some of you have heard these for the last year. And you're not getting your 15, 16, 12 percent. And once you lock that money in, it keeps making more money for you. Lock it in. Make some money. Like Brian P says, here we go. We have Victor Morrell, and I did go something else. BTC, ETH, and Doji Coin are up year to date. At least BTC and ETH should be in every portfolio account, BTC or ETH. I agree. 110% I agree with that. That's how it has to be. And now I lost track of where I was going to go when I actually went over here to go look at something. And may, Oh, Yomax ETF. Yomax ETFs.com. Okay. Let's go over here. And see, as it scrolls on the screen, you guys will be able to see it for yourself. All right. I'll just sit here idly by because they actually scroll and I think they show um, the re returns that they're giving out based on the stock price for today. So some people were able to get a lower stock price so that, all right so there you go um it's pretty much level it's been at this ark for everybody on podcast is 36 percent apple is 10 percent maybe people feel a little more comfortable about apple nvidia 22 percent that's pretty interesting you have distribution fby 27 anybody would be happy with a 4.2 percent 30 day sec yield i don't know what the asterisk means but go check it out you got to study this stuff look look at this coin still do crazy 
Z. I mean, this is absurd. Disney. I mean, this is Netflix. Come on, guys. Look, this is what we're dealing with here. This, this is what, what you're dealing with. I think anybody would love any of these distribution rates. You can go study. You click on this. In fact, I want to do something interesting. And as you guys know, if the... Federal Reserves reduce interest rates, people will start buying and this get what was what were we on? Um Exxon. Let me go see. Let's go see what's happening with that Exxon. If you go to Exxon, you can't get this return on Exxon. It's gonna be like three percent or two percent is what they give out as a dividend. But look at this. Here's what they gave out. 28 cents in the month of XOMO got 40 cents per share. Now, I wish they would show the share price on here because that would make things more interesting on our favorite. Oh, Oh, that's no, that's not what I'm looking for. Hold on a second. Uh, XOMO, that's not, isn't that the right one? Okay, first of all, just so you guys know, XOM is Exxon. I'm trying to figure out what's the symbol. I thought it was XOMO. I don't have any of this Exxon, but I thought it was XOMO. Maybe it's not XOMO. That's a problem. All right, fine. It's okay. Let's go see. Buy our ETFs. There isn't it? Let's go. It was XOMO. I know that's what it was. Huh. But it went to Exxon Direct Stock. Oh, well. Um, they're showing you Ameritrade, if you have that. Fidelity, Vanguard, E-Trace, Raw, Swab, Robinhood, Interactive Brokers, SoFi. The main places and then some. If these guys have them, damn near everybody has them. Nobody's going to exclude this. Now, what's going on with the XOMO? That should have been it. Eh, that's the stock symbol. Hmm. Okay. That's prospectus. But nonetheless, this is what you do. You go look, study, figure out what you want, because I'm not going to be able to bring up XOMO. All right. So whatever that is. Happen, what's happening there? I'm so deep, says Paul Castillo in the hole with BTC and doggy coin, that my only choice is just let it ride. You're not deep. Um, all it means is that's what you're supposed to do with crypto. Either you have to hold or you have to sell it in L at a loss. So since you're holding and you know the ETFs are coming, there's I think there's an even the ETF trying to be done for doji coin or doggy coin, as I call it. Um, people call it Dogecoin. I've always called it doggy coin because they had that dog as their image. So nonetheless, uh, you, you have to hold it and you should think that it's going to be a nice ride. In fact, since some people aren't up to speed, maybe they just think I'm just talking crazy. Look, look at this. Uh, ETFs, uh, Bitcoin, ETFs coming out. Coming soon, coming out. First approval could come early 2024. There you go. All right. There you go. If approved, the ETF could get, begin operations immediately and be listed and traded on major stock exchanges. This is in October. All right. And by the way, um, hold on. Bit uh, Canadian. Here we go. By the way. Here we go. Canadian spot Bitcoin ETF. It has been shown, have been very efficient at mimicking direct portfolio exposure to Bitcoin without the added uncertainty. Here we go. Here we go. So it exists. Canadians 
and you guys thought that the Bitcoin prices were just rising for the hell of it. Wrong. There's other places that buy Bitcoin around the world on an ETF basis. The United States is where the most money is that people can use. We are a consumer nation and we have the most money because we allow people to leverage. Not once, not twice, not three times. You can leverage assets on assets on assets. So therefore, you can borrow on borrow on borrow and people can put their money into these ETFs. That's what's going to happen. As soon as the American ones are released and two or three of them, hundreds of millions of dollars will be flowing into Bitcoin and Ethereum and some other projects, quite frankly. But those are the big boys. All right. So don't worry. I don't know how deep you're going to have to be, but I suggest it might go past the 70 number, 70,000, ladies and gentlemen, for a perfect storm. Stocks going up, crypto going up, housing prices going up, people tapping into the equity on all forms, borrowing against their stocks, borrowing against their home equity, borrowing against, I mean, it's just going to be out of hand. It's going to be out of hand. All right. To look up. Okay, hold on. Brian, make some money to look up. I'm so deep. Okay, I must have missed something here somewhere. All right. Once again, if you like what we're talking about, please subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and share the videos. A lot of people are working hard. They don't know that. They... Can you imagine if people really knew they could get 20, 30 percent, not having to do anything but yeah, work for the money, put it into some place. And you're thinking, how do these people stay ahead of us? Well, how they stay ahead of you is they're taking more than 50% of what they make and putting it into assets. Cash poor, asset rich. Real estate, businesses, stocks, that's what you have to start thinking about. All right. Or start thinking about starting a business, starting something, because you're not going to be able to outrun inflation and profitable companies that don't need the money. You have to say things for real. It's real. It's the real situation is simply what happens if companies, they don't really need to make profit. And some of you may be going, what do you mean? Well, your comp their companies could be making hundreds of millions of dollars, but they never tell you how much they're making offshore. So in the United States, you can show like I'm taking L's, but offshore, you ain't taking L's. All right. So think about that. Meanwhile, you ever figured out why they don't have to drop their prices yet? Why prices keep rising? Because these are multi international companies. They don't have to make money in America. They can just charge you whatever they want. It's not based on you're not buying it. They're just like, okay, we'll make the package smaller. Charge you the same amount. Fine. It's just like we're selling hundreds of billions of dollars of stuff around the world. Sure, we like to make our shareholders happy. Don't get us wrong. But we can make them happy just by having stock prices increase. And then when we get more assets, we'll just add that to our portfolio increase the value of our company, and then we'll just go buy back our own shares if we want to increase the price of our stock. Come on, get up, get up with the game, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I know I'm talking a lot and might not make sense to a lot of people, but come on, get in the game. You're in the game, actually. You're here. You're listening. You're paying attention. You got your pen, pad, and papers ready, or, you know, you're going to block it like, you know, our favorite Y channel does. Fine, but some of you aren't blocked. And some of you are going to be sitting here two years, three years from now going, man, I remember when we were talking about this in 2022 and 2021. And all it did was take four or five years to come to fruition. And now I'm sitting here like, man, money's coming in from sources and assets that I don't have to reinvest in or do anything. My money's making money for me. I can relax. But yeah, five, six, seven years, eight years, whatever the case, 10 years, who cares? At least it's not 40, right? And at least you're not beholding to if a company says, hey, you know what? We're ending this yellow truck. 
you know, the infamous dude is arguing, is, you know, upset. I've been working here like 30 plus years and I always showed up on time. I never had a problem. I thought I was going to have my pension. Yeah, right. See, all that work for 30 plus years, it's not a guarantee that the company will be around nor be liquid. Every year a company is fighting for against other competition, having to leverage, having to always figure out how to make their shareholders happy. And so that takes a toll on companies over time. So it's just the way it works. It's capitalist society. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a little break here. Let me see what video we're going to bust out today. I don't have anything special. I don't have any new SSN lifestyles. I'm going to have to make a new one since we've been to the DR. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything new. So we'll play a little bit oldie, but good. In fact, I've played this before. Let's go with land auction, the newer version. I've played that a few times since we've been talking real estate a lot. A lot of people say, okay, eh, I don't know if I have it. I got to have it here somewhere. I don't have these in alphabetical order. And I should. Nope, here we go. Land auction, LA, take one. I told a story about this before. I go to the landauction.com. They used to be in business. It's more like discount lots now. Discount lots is there. Imagine if you're going to a seminar at night or in the morning and they have their infomercial late night and every eight to 10 minutes, this little clip I'm about to show you runs to get people to come to the auction. So the first auction I went to, I think it was the first one, it was in L.A. and it's at the Sheridan by Universal. And I bought some uh, lots there for Northern California. So imagine nobody from L.A. came to uh, went all the way up to Northern California to buy land. They didn't see it. So I doubt they, they didn't go there. So clearly I have an advantage because I actually went. I know where they are. And the people down there, they're like, eh, where the hell is this place? I'm not going to bid on this. So, yeah, you know, I get this stuff for two, three grand lots. And then I turn around, put it on eBay. Get this. I put it on eBay. You heard me. eBay, seven-day auction. Buy it for three. Seven days. Somebody says, ah, I'll take it for nine grand. I have two of them. All right? So the second one, somebody says, I'll give you seven, 7,200, whatever it ends up being is the bid. But I haven't even received title, so to speak. I've signed papers to get a title. It's at the escrow company. In uh, 10 to 14 days, I have 16 G's, 17 G's for stuff that I bought for five to seven G's. I'm like, when's the next auction? Meanwhile, I just send the money to these guys, the seven G's, and they're just like, damn, we didn't even close the place. Didn't even close the deal yet officially. So I'm just like, here's the money. Put it in these dudes' names. Call the holiday day, Chicago title. I love you. Good, beautiful. Wash, rinse, repeat. Here's the video. I come walking out and they say, hey, do you mind talking to this person over here? I'm like, why not? To order that free brochure, now is the time to do it. It's a free call and a free brochure. There's absolutely no obligation when you call. Do yourself a favor and order the free brochure and look it over. There are hundreds of properties to choose from. You may just be surprised at what you find. And like I said, it's free. So make that call. Start planning your future by owning real estate today. What did you think of the selection of properties that we had available for you? Well, I thought that there was a vast selection of properties in different cities and different counties and different states. It was a spectacular, um, you know, selection. And so for someone that does their homework, they can really get a, a lot of great buys. There are a large variety of sizes and prices and locations. So I think that's fantastic. It just gives you a, a good opportunity to find the best parcel for you. They have 100 or 
150, 200 pieces of property. So there's something here for everybody. North coast, south coast, ocean, desert. Well, actually, I've been on properties in California, in Utah, Nevada, Hawaii, and um, New Mexico. What do you think of the variety of the property? Absolutely. All over the United States. You guys have property in Hawaii, for God's sake. For dirt cheap. I mean, you can't beat that. 1200 bucks in Hawaii. 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8,000, 9. The land is selling like crazy in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, that's right. The young gun in the house. Hey, what can I say? Like I always said, we actually do this. This isn't something that we read in the book. This isn't something that people can uh, all of a sudden package up and be like, hey, this is how you do it. This is what we do. All right. So you have to understand there's nuances to everything. And so being at the right place at the right time and making it easy that's the hardest thing. So that's why I try to make it easy so you understand it can be done. It's not that hard. You just feel a little afraid sometimes because you don't know the end result, but you have to walk through the path. And so hopefully I'm guiding you guys along. And some people like the Moe's, the Georges, all the guys eat white who came down and we hung out in Punta Cana. They saw firsthand and now they understand the value of actually doing it, being there, seeing it, talking, boots on the ground, walking around, doing what you're supposed to be doing. There's nothing wrong with not having boots on the ground. But at the same time, it changes things because now you're building relationships with people that you're going to be doing business in that area. And you never know what type of business information that's going to come out. So hopefully in the next two weeks. You guys are going to find out. Everybody wants to know about these furniture packages. They want to know what they can do and this, that, and the other. Well, here's what's going to happen. Just so you guys know, I'll probably do a video about this. But if you are doing pre-construction or if you have a rental and you are in Dominican Republic, I'm going to start having to take orders, not really orders, but I need your information. And I'm going to start saying right now, send me an email. And if you're interested, here's the criteria that you're going to need. First of all, nobody may know this information unless your place is built. Dimensions of your place would be great to know. Each room, if you know that, then you'll have it set up where you can actually design what you want to put in your place. That's the first battle that you're going to cross. Now, once you do that, then you'll be able to figure out, oh, okay. And then we can get to the work and the business at hand. We are trying to do damn near wholesale pricing. So when somebody tells you a furniture package is 20 grand, we are like, no, we are trying to get it for seven. Eight. That's what we're talking about here. So I have a little work to do. The guys woke up the business thing in me. I was like, easy. I was chilling, man. I'm just relaxing, doing these videos, having a little fun. And then when I go to the DR, man, these dudes are over here. Eric, we need you to do this. Eric, can you do that? Eric, do that. And then I got a challenge. I'll just tell you part of what the challenge was. I'm sitting there talking about, hey, man, you know, it would be nice if you guys put a at Laramar, my favorite number one project, I said, you know that Cliff, it would be so much nicer if you guys had some sort of gondola or some way to have a ride up there. People can park down below. You can charge people either way you want to do it to go up because they can only go to the beach club. So you might as well just charge the whole thing right there, just like you would do in any other place, like a ski resort or at uh, some of these cities where they have rooftop decks and they make you pay while you're downstairs before you go up the elevator and saying, hey, you, you, you're going over here. We need you to pay 30 bucks. And this goes against the consumption tax. It's 30 bucks. If you use it, great. If you don't, it costs 30 bucks. Either way, we getting paid. But now you've alleviated traffic within the complex. Yeah, it might cost you a little bit of money, but now you have an attraction. 
where people go, wait, there's a gondola ride. We ride up, we can look over the city. And then when we get up here, party time, shops, beach clubs. And oh, by the way, it's a half a mile long. Can you imagine all the Instagram that's going to be social media stuff that's going to happen when this thing comes out in two years, approximately? But imagine if people are going up in a gondola. You guys know what that is, right? Very cool pictures, a little time. But of course, there's maintenance. There's this. But that's why you charge people. Make it simple. Charge them at the bottom. Simple. Simple. I mean, I don't see a problem. Or charge them all the way. Charge them going, charge them coming. Because what I would do if I'm at the beach club and I'm not driving, I just tell my friends I'd be making a deal with the bus companies, have a bus stop right here. I mean, I'd be doing all kind of crazy stuff. Bus stop would be right there. So people don't, if you don't have a car, but you want to come hang out up here, bus comes, drops you off. You got to pay to go up, pay to come down, whatever you want to do. Sky's the limit because nobody's going to care about a few bucks. Let's get real. All right. So the challenge. Yeah, that's a good idea. But, you know, we don't really want to go for that kind of thing. I'm like, fine. But then it's like, but if you bring something to us, I'm like, oh, oh hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. First, I'm trying to be like, give information to you. Now, if you say, if you bring something to us. Now, if I bring something to you, you know I'm going to be in the deal. All right, let's just get real. I'm thinking, okay, I'll make some more money if you want me to. I'll make it happen. I just wasn't going to go waste time trying to do all that because it's going to take work. Trying to get a company. They're going to want, I don't know how much, tens of millions to produce. Make it happen. So now you have to go talk to people, try to make deals, make sure it works, make sure we can get the right company that's reputable. They're all going to want, oh, yeah, we want $50 million or $30 million or 20 I don't even know yet. But the challenge was, hey, bring some to us and we might consider. I'm like, oh, hold up a second. This is millions we talking about. It might be worth my time. Might be worth my time. Eric, listen to Gennaro Seminar today. He said Laramar Furniture Package will be announced soon. Paul Castillo, I know it's going to be announced soon. Here's the thing. So, look, look, I just got to tell you, the reason why uh, Laramar is number one, it's very different than most developers. I I can't, I think these guys are going to do something crazy. I really do. Because I can't figure out how you can spend 15 grand on a condo. I just can't see it. I just, when we only have a one bedroom and all we have is a living room, dining room combo, and we have a sofa and a coffee table. I, I, and we have a bedroom set. That's it. I mean, yeah, we have pictures on the wall and things like that. But I'm like, the white lines included. If we had to buy, you know, freezers and all that, it would be different. But that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it don't really matter. I mean, it's two years from now. I don't really care about the furniture package. But if they're willing to lock in a price, which they said they're not, but we'll see. Curtis Davis, welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream with the icon next to his name, also known as AKA Mr. Cool is here. He's the man delivering information. I pop up my YouTube. I go to his Chili Davis, C-H-I-L-L-Y Davis channel. And when it pops up every day, you know how I know the stock market's going up because he sends out information throughout the day. And I saw green. I'm like, oh, it's green. I hit the like button. I'm like, oh, man, right on. It's green again. Then I'm like another pop up green again. I'm just like, oh, it's another green day. He helps you out, ladies and gentlemen, with updates, whether it's under the community tab or whether you go watch his videos. So go to Chili Davis with two L C H I L O Y Davis, smash the like button, click the all notification bell when you subscribe. And he's part of the SSN Nation Academy University, no guru zone, because he also helps people out with information. He does not have ebooks, e courses, nothing. He's just trying to help you out. That's what we do, ladies and gentlemen. And he brings a tagline. Good evening, SSN family. ABMM, always be making money. Right on. Paul Castillo, must, uh, he, he can understand Spanish. 
All right. Well, that's very good. So the Laramar Furniture Package, the only reason they're going to say that is because there have been a certain people in the SSN Nation asking for furniture packages two years out. So he's like, all right, all right, I'll get something to you. But I don't know how you're going to be held to that number because two years from now, the furniture could be different, not available. I, I'm, I'm hesitant to do anything two years in advance. More like if they say, hey, Eric, we're going to have delivery in seven months or six months, then start worrying about furniture packages. We are going to start looking at furniture packages here in the SSN Nation because we have some people that's going to have delivery in about six months. So that changes things. So Christmas is coming and all that. So four, five, six months. So now you're going to start thinking, do I want to get the furniture package, pay the extra 20,000 in some cases, 18,000 in some cases, 30,000, or can somebody make something special for me for half the price? Custom. And it also depends on what your rules are if you plan on renting. So that's going to come into play as well. Because like a lot of these projects are saying, you have to order our furniture package to rent. Not Laramar. That's why I kind of get excited. But I have a feeling that Laramar is probably going to go to the same people and have things custom made. See, that's where, because they know the actual uh, square footage. They know it exact. So they can order it. You, an individual, have to measure. And again, if you're buying furniture packages, I would be very hesitant to order something that I need exact measurements. If it's just a desk, table, chairs, things like that, I still need something because I want to show you guys something. In fact, I was looking at it today and I didn't take very good pictures, sadly. But I'm going to show this one picture here, I think that here i'll show let me let me see if i can pick out a good picture here uh okay this one right here i'm going to show you guys something this is simon resonances inside prima vero 2 this is the three levels high and that's the penthouse unit across the way all right so that is roughly 800, I think it was, it's 820 square feet, all right? So I'll show a few other things just so you guys can see. This right here is when you are on the bottom deck. So you can see right here, that's third floor. That's the patio, balcony area, all good. Okay, but here's this. Let me show you the kitchen area let me see if i can find this one picture i didn't do such a great job but i want you to pay attention look at this you see that that's 800 square feet the door is on the right so if you said oh i'm just going to order something that's fine but all i'm going to say is how wide can your dining room table be that's the question so just willy nilly saying, OK, I'll get a six foot long dining room table. Start looking. You're going to be like, how wide is this in the first place? I couldn't even tell you how wide it is because I actually I can tell you because there's actually tiles. But one, two, three, four, five. It's like 18 inches. So five times 18. That's how wide that is. But the point I'm trying to make is, are you going to risk ordering? your dining room table set based on numbers, renderings. And then when you see this, how wide is this really? That little uh, island there is no more than about four and a half, five feet. Just to give you an idea, if it's five feet, I don't think it's five feet. I didn't have a measuring tape, but that's the living room, dining room area. And again, behind the door, there's a few feet, which unfortunately I wasn't really there for doing this i was just checking out the spot but this just gives you an idea of why when you're trying to measure something you're sitting there going okay i'm going to measure but this is in the doorway of a bit of the master all right we're talking about a 10 by 10 
So again, tell me which wall you're going to put your bet on. Are you going to put your bet on the left wall where the windows are? Highly unlikely. I mean, some people do. I wouldn't. Are you going to put your bed on the wall that's uh, right beside you? So your bed is facing towards the bathroom and the closet? Maybe. Or are you going to put your bed on the right wall that you're looking out through the into the sky? And now when you walk in, you have about a foot or two before you run into your bed. So you always walk around your bed. There's all logistics. But clearly... You can't just pick out something and then later on go, oh, I want to put it on this wall. It doesn't look right on that wall. That's the reason if you pick something that's going to be custom made, it's too early. Because me personally, I, I don't know what I would do with this. I'm not putting it on the left wall for sure with the window. And I really don't want it next to where the bathroom is and the closet is straight ahead. Where am I going to put the TV? Seriously. So this is puts it in a certain interesting scenario. So where are we going to put the TV at? You can't put it on the other wall. So now you would think going by whatever you figure your configuration is going to be. But when you get there, you might be like, damn, I'm not going to put it on this wall over here. Because I didn't realize in the renderings that there was going to be windows there. That's what I'm saying. Before you build it, you don't know exactly where everything's going to be. So you got to be very careful. And my other point I should bring out, because people were talking about furniture also, the guys are getting a little antsy. But I want to point something else out. Here, where's that original picture? I'm trying. Oh, by the way, upstairs at Simon Terraces. Remember, this is $82,000. This is a deck upstairs on the, on the um, penthouse. That door on the right is a full bathroom. Shower, toilet, sink. That is an, uh, it's it's a brick covering that you guys saw. And then when you come out, look, you see out over everything. Pretty cool, right? That's the way. But I want everybody to know who owns in Primavera. I want you guys to notice something. Look right here. That looks to be a two-bedroom, two-bath house, and look what's on top. Apparently, the HOA allows you to put up something up top. Shall we zoom in? This is interesting. Didn't even realize it till I was looking at pictures today. They allowed you to put something up there. That's a two-bedroom, one-bath or two-bedroom, two-bath. That somebody bought for like 60 or 70 or 80 grand. And now they have something on their roof that's apparently allowed. So I thought that was interesting. So once again, we're into the real estate investment phase. Here's the other news Simon uh, Residences, nobody mentioned they were gonna have three buildings, renderings only showed two. Now it turns out there's three. Unbelievable. So I'm going to give you guys some thoughts because you guys have to understand when people were looking at this and I was saying, hey, guys, you might want the first building. They said, Eric, it's showing in the renderings that there's a field on the right side. I said, yeah, that's the problem. Notice what they're showing on the left side. I said, they're showing on the left side, homes. You know homes can only be two floors high. If you're on the third level, your third level sees out over the homes and your penthouse unit sees out over everything. But if you have something on the right side, which you don't know what that's going to be there, you could be blocked. And sure enough, look what's on the right side. You're blocked from a view. You're seeing the next building over. That was not on the renderings. So this is my point I'm trying to make is you don't know what's going to happen. So don't try to make something better than what it is. Go for what you know is going to be. All right. So they go, Eric, it's going to be a green area or whatever. I said, no, it's not. I said, that that's ridiculous. Why would you put green area that whole way right there? 
And sure enough, it turns out the other way around. So there you go. And I wanted to show something else before we end this little section. So from the unit, look, you see out over everything, just like it's planned. Because you chose the right one. If you chose the other one, you're blocked. You're just going to see the next building. And they're only 10 feet away. By the, or It seemed like 10 feet, 15 feet away. It's that close. Um, what I wanted to do was go out to the front once again. And again, this right here, where are you going to put your sofa? Where are you going to put your coffee table? On the side where the door is or on the other wall? Then where you're going to put your TV. So see, again, now you can go order your stuff because now you know the measurements. You can measure it out exact. So now if you want to put in some custom stuff, you can do it exactly. You don't have to worry. All right. And you still have time. This won't be delivered for about five months, six months still. All right. So just so you guys know, that's how it goes. All right. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Okay. George, you listening? <laughs> Mo better. Agreed, Eric. Accurate dimensions are important. Yes, if you're going to do custom, they have to, you have to do it. If you're not going to do custom and you're going, okay, I, I, I still I don't see how you order before it's done. Because, again, after, I, after you go to Simon Residences, you see the walls, you're like, okay, that's eight feet. So what am I going to do in that eight feet? I, I want to have a coffee table. That's going to be in front. But at the end, I want a table, too. So when somebody's sitting over here, they can put something on a little end table, like a drink or whatever, snacks, whatever. So if the wall's six feet, well, then I can't even have a six feet. I can only have a six foot sofa. I can't have anything at the end. So therefore, then I'm going to order me up a pseudo love seat, a little bit larger than a love seat. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, so it puts you in different situations. And without knowing the unit and seeing the unit and where the walls are and where the windows are and where the doors are, the renderings do no justice. Because you're thinking there's plenty of space on the right side and all there really is is six feet. Put up a 75, 85-inch TV. Put in a floating shelf. Whatever else you want to do. But you're like or put in a desk area or people can do some work. I don't know, but there's not much space. You can't do too much and you still got to get around if you want to go out to your patio or balcony area. So just keep that in mind. All right. So no rush, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Don't be quick to try and pull the trigger on $20,000, $30,000 and and then you find out there's a trend that happens, just like what's happened over the last three, four years. There's trends. But again, I will say this in real estate. There's a reason. It's very interesting. You know, you can go to five million dollar homes, 10 million dollar homes. And they have furniture in there that people have never seen. And all it is, is sometimes it's custom. Sometimes it's from out of the country, so you're not going to see it. But the point that I'm trying to make is if you make custom furniture that nobody, it's not a trend, then you have a longer lifespan because people have never seen it. So that changes everything. The place looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful, but it's not an everyday thing. So you get to keep it as long as it lasts. If you're doing short term rentals, well, generally five to seven years if you're doing any amount of 60, 70 percent rentals. But just keep all these in mind. But if you have good quality, you do get to get to the five to seven years. Victor Moreau, if he's still here, he's got Margaritaville and uh, they use Ethan Allen. And some of you may or may not know about Ethan Allen, but Ethan Allen, if you go in their store, you're going to You'll be in the nosebleed section on a lot of their furniture. You're going to be sitting there going, what? Wait, $8,000. What's this guy talking about? $8,000 for a sofa? Love seat? That's it? Are you serious? $6,500? You're like, what? But the quality, that's the kicker. It's the quality. It's, it's very nicely built furniture. And most of it used to be made in USA. 
in uh, either North Carolina, South Carolina. So they make very good furniture, but now they charge for it. <laughs> and so you might get your seven years. You might be able to plan after five years, hey, it's time to re-up our furniture pack. So at the six-year mark, you got to change it over. But again, if you don't have like a 60, 70 percent occupancy rate, then you can get to go out to 10 years. It's worth it. Right. But if you get that cheap Ikea, count on two and a half, three years. If you have a 60, 70 percent occupancy rate. Those are the differences. Or you won't be able to get the higher rental rate. Everybody knows it goes by what it looks like. You fix up your place, make it special. You show it. People are like, oh, I, I feel comfortable with this spot. All right. So just keep that in mind. So uh, we already went over that. OK, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap this up. We're not going to stay too long. But if there's anything you ever want to talk about, you can always hit me up at support at StopStrugglingNow.com. And on the live stream, you can discuss anything you want. The chat room is open to everybody. All right. Except on Wednesday nights. Only members with the icon can be in the chat room. <laughs> I love it. All right. Here we go. Eric, how do we go about ordering these furniture packages from China to get it at the right time when we get the keys of the unit? There you go, Paul Castillo. Very good question. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll know much more when I have face-to-face -face meetings over the next two weeks, all right? I'm going to have face-to-face -face meetings because this is about to be something that's going to go a little, I wasn't planning on doing it, but we do have over 40, 50 people that's going to have projects upcoming in the next six months to three and a half, four years out. And we're probably going to have more people come once they find out that you can get in on the train and be like, hey, this is what's on offer. This is how much it's going to be. And the most important part is you just said it right here. 90 days. So here's what's going to happen. Just like right now. So I just showed you Simon Residences. I was there. OK, I went to Simon Residences and I could do the dimensions right now. So I could order right now. Right. The delivery is probably going to be six months from now still. But that's the coordination. You can start getting everything together now because, you know, delivery is not going to be for another six months. So. 90 days is how long it takes to create your creation and shipped here. So you have a three month window now on delivery. Now, all of a sudden, you have to have 30, 45 days before you close. Right. So you have plenty of time. That's what people don't understand. It's not like all of a sudden it's done. Come get your unit. And now you have that 60 day or 90 day time frame to complete. Even if you do, you can order it then. Because you're not going to close in one week. You're not going to close in a month. It's going to take maybe two months, three months to close. So you can wait till actually delivery and then measure everything if you want. I mean, seriously, you don't have to do it that far in advance. You can start thinking about it when they say, hey, I think it's going to be done in six, seven months. But it's not like you have full cash. Give them the cash. OK, they still have to issue the title. You still don't hold it yet until it's issued. So it's not like you can move in. So just chill. But that's what I'm saying. So the right time is when you are getting a little closer. Like I'm at Simon Residence. So I see that they don't have the kitchen all together yet. They don't have the, uh, the bathroom or they don't have the terrace all done yet. They still got five, six months to go. Right. So and it's still not even a delivery date. So as soon as the delivery date comes up or they notify you delivery date, it's going to be whatever. Now, you should be looking at samples. You should be looking at what's available so you can get an idea. Yes, nothing wrong with that. But trying to order like right now when it's not even going to be ready for nine months or six months or five months and delivery is not going to it's going to take seven months to title. You can just start looking now. It takes 90 days. You know, it's coming in three months. Closing is going to take two to three months. So there's no real rush. So, yeah, you have advantages. You can go right there at Simon Residences. Go do your measurements. 
Now I can go down and say, okay, this is where I think I'm going to put things, start moving things around. And yes, it's uh, on computer. Don't worry. You'll have a link, Paul Castillo. All right. You'll have a link. You can go in, move stuff around, do your own little search, put your own furniture that you picked out over here, do colors, do all that like a designer. Just what designers do. All right. You can do all of it. Stay tuned. We're going to see how far this is going to go. Make sure we can get business done the right way. All right. Curtis Davis, Mr. Financial, quality equals money in furniture. Exactly. That's another thing. That's another thing right there. Uh, your certain your pictures on a wall. OK, it looks nice when they're, you know, nice pictures, but that doesn't mean you have to spin crazy. Lighting matters. OK, but again, we have LEDs these days. You don't have to spin crazy. Uh, furniture itself, though, has should be well built, able to take. Let's just say what it is. You have little kids. 75, 100 pounds. You have grown adults, generally over 100 pounds, but they could be 300 pounds, 250 pounds sitting on furniture for a week, two weeks, 50 days a year. So again, that's why quality of furniture to long last matters. So when it comes to sofas, anything people are sitting on, sleeping on, using a lot, that needs to have a higher quality if you want it to last long and look good. That's what it needs. So just a little something. Quality equals money is exactly right. It'll save you money in the long run. Victor Morrell's uh, package, I think initially... If I have my numbers, it was around $30,000 at Margaritaville. We're talking about 20, it must have been 2017 or 2018. Somewhere in there. Here it is, 2023, getting ready to be 2024 with a high occupancy rate for two years, almost damn near 95 to 100% during COVID in the next year. It was crazy. And now I think it's going to be 50000 50 for the replacement but but hold on since they are renting they always keep something in reserve which is something you guys have to understand just because you want to make the 1500 or the two thousand dollars per week remember you should keep back two three hundred dollars or whatever you want to do a hundred two hundred three hundred dollars per reservation all right. That goes into a reserve. So then five years later, you sit there and you go, OK, I have 20, 25 grand, 30 grand. Let's go shopping. All right. Keep that in mind. Six years later, 25, 30 grand, go shopping. And lucky for you, you're going to have inside track for life, hopefully, if we do this deal right. All right. Here we are. Ariam Kaye is in the house. Another emerging millionaire is here. Welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. He says Big Dog is in the house. Best live on YouTube and host Eric B. A.K. The King is back from DR. Thank you so much. Let's make money. Let's talk investments. That's what we do here. And yes, the King of DR. I love that, actually. The king of DR. Not yet. Not quite yet. They said, Eric, we have a challenge for you. I'm like, guys, you don't understand what you're doing, do you? You don't really know what you're doing. You really want me to get involved with this? You do understand I do takeover, right? I do takeover. And what I mean is I don't take over by force. I don't take over. I'm just like, I start utilizing assets that are in place. And then I make sure and I start saying, hey, I think I need to get paid. Right now, I'm just being nice guy, being like, hey, here's some suggestions. Here's this. But when you start saying, yeah, I got a challenge, you can, oh, wait. Okay. And you don't, you best believe if I do this thing with this uh, gondola, you best believe I'm going to be going to some of those mountain regions and doing some other deals with the same companies and making some mills. All right. So we'll be back into the game. If you want me to come out of retirement, I will. But 
Let's see, because I really don't want to do it, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to at least call, make some calls, see what I can do, see what it's going to take. Might have to go back to Cali, too, because, you know, there's where gondolas are and certain things. You might know somebody. We always know somebody. So, all right, durability matters when two, 300 pounds sit, in, sit on it or other. Exactly. Exactly. Two people in each other's laps. Three, four, 500 pounds, right? I'm just saying, springs matter. Cushions matter. Everything matters. Uh, materials matter a lot. Flooring material matters. People are going to be high heels, sandals, everything. Sand's going to be swished about. I mean, all this matters. And so, so far, they're using ceramic tiles, or I don't even know what that tile is, really. I guess it's ceramic um everybody's using that gray white gray stuff on walls on floors all over the place uh i have nothing wrong with that it's a rental but you know that's the thing but yeah uh arium kaye i was hoping that you might be in the dr and coming to visit we were at la bruja but it's in los corrales you know where it is we were not oh i was in santo domingo for a few hot minutes uh because I landed there, wanted to find out what that bus was. Oh, my God, it works out beautifully. Santo Domingo, cheaper airport to fly into. Traditionally, you get on the Expresso Bavaro at number one stop when you go to their website. 450 pesos per person. You get your snacks before you go. Wi-Fi is on board. The uh, power on the lower level bus I was in did not work. So make sure your phone is fully charged or you have a backup for your phone. And uh, it took three hours and that's riding all the way to El Dorado Plaza in Bavaro that dropped you off right by that juice bar, world famous juice bar in Bavaro. And if you're staying anywhere near there, which yes, less than 200 yards away, we're staying at Coral Village. Hey, bags rolled up. Made a left, less than 200 yards away, no problem. All for 450 pesos. Airport you, uh, Uber was uh, $30, 28 something. So, all right, and three hours later. It does stop, though, at Blue Mall. It also stopped at the airport, Punakana Airport. Then it drove through Punakana, a, a way I've never been before. And I guess that's the other Punakana where Xfinity is and all that. I no, I was like, where are we at? I was like, what the heck? Then all of a sudden, next thing I know, they made a ride or something. And we ended up right by El Dorado. But at Blue Mall, you would have been there two and a half hours. It took 30 minutes to drive through because they're dropping people off in all these little spots. But so what? It was like an adventure. Let's see what happens. Where does this go? So that way I can tell people about it. So Santo Domingo, fly there. It was like. $99, let's say. I, I know on mine, it was $99 to fly to San Domingo. It would have been like $175 or 190 to fly into Punacana. So I was like, okay, let's go take an adventure. So it was $99, $30 for the uh, Uber, 450 pesos in Punacana. So $125 let's, or $129. Um, that's it. And you're there. Three hours later after you land, but who cares? Sightseeing a little bit, Wi-Fi, bathrooms, snacks, chilled out, comfortable chairs, clean, no problems. Beautiful. I couldn't believe it. Better than Greyhound, double-decker. It was awesome, quite frankly. I, I was expecting a, a little bit bumpier ride. Maybe not as nice as well. So, um, but I'm not doing that when I go back. All right. It was just an adventure one time. The other times we just go to P, uh, fly into Punicana. All right. That was a one time thing. Um, so that's how we do it. All right. Nadine in. Welcome to the SSN Nation Money Making Monday live stream. And she's in that project that is like the number one project inside Vista Cana, the Equestrian Center. She's a real estate investor too. And she's looking for more potentially. 
I'm very happy to see you once again. Thank you so much for being here with the icon next to your name. And, oh, speaking of, she has a villa in one of the best places. So she has to deck it out. She's sitting there listening to me. Eric, what do you mean I have to deck it out? You know how big the place is? I'm like, hold on, Eric. I, I wasn't planning on spending 40 Gs. No, Nadine, in. you will not have to spend the 40 Gs. We are going to be doing custom work for you. And then what better place to have custom furniture? Oh, my God. In Savannah Villa, it's already going to be off the chart. The cartel villas where they have nine inch to 12 foot or 12 inches long concrete like this. You can't shoot bullets through. I don't even know if we're going to have IEDs going through this stuff. The walls are like this thick. It's crazy. I'm impressed. I'm like, they are not going to get blown down. A hurricane situation ain't going to take them out. It's serious. I was just like, oh, my God, this place is a fortress. Um, that means heating, air conditioning, everything stays in the house. So it's impressive how thick these walls are. I mean, good God almighty. But now, how are you going to furnish these big old places? These 2,000 square feet, 1,800 square feet, 2,500. I don't know what size she has. I don't think it, yeah, I don't know. I don't think she got the 4,000 or the 5,000 square foot one, but good God almighty. If you did, it's going to cost an arm and a leg to furnish a 5,000 or 4,000 square foot house. Believe me, I know. But again, we know how to get furniture where we don't have to pay fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to furnish 4,000 square feet. All right. You guys are going to have the way Mo, thanks to him as well, because uh, Mo can speak a little Spanish. So that helped out. We were there. We're going to actually make things happen. Then we go to um, other places. I still have other places I need to go to in Santo Domingo, by the way, because I need stuff off the boat that people aren't picking up at customs. I want to know where that stuff is going. Because that stuff is special order, usually, and it's sitting there. And it's like, hey, it's not coming through customs. They didn't have a custom agent, right? And now they collect it because it's been sitting there and you're not paying your fees. And somebody has a deal on the island that gets that those pieces. And those pieces sometimes are awesome. Like I said, um, you guys can see some of my first videos. And while I'm walking through the house, You'll see some uh, some like tusk on cabinets and stuff like that. That's some furniture because at the Oakland port, the furniture company in SAC was selling it. I flipped it over and I always flip over furniture. I find the name of the manufacturer and I was like, wait, this dude's trying to charge me. OK, imagine this 30 years ago, 20, 20 years ago. A guy's telling you $4,000 for a cabinet. You're like, have you lost your mind? 20 years ago, not now, 20. I'm like, you lost your mind. It's cool and all, but you don't know who I am. So I flip it over. <laughs> My wife just starts laughing. She's like, oh, he's in trouble. He ain't selling nothing today. And I'm like, ah, so the manufacturer is bing. So I call it the manufacturer. I'm like, hey, man. I just saw this. And then the manufacturer's like, that's not all we have. What else do you have beside, behind curtain three? Let me send you the catalog. He's like, we have end tables. Wait, end tables that match this? Yeah. Then I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. He's like, and we got desk. I'm like, you got desk to match this? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, what about the coffee? We got that? I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm in heaven. And then he proceeds to tell me, you know, we've had shipments go to Oakland Port and people couldn't pick them up. So we had to send them over to this furniture store. So you should go down there and talk to them. I go to the furniture store. This dude says, yeah, this has been sitting here for like three weeks. You can have the desk. You can have the bar. You can have the end tables. You can have some other table. I can't remember right now. And then he says, $2,400 for all of it. I was like, thank you very much. 
I'll take it. All of it. Meanwhile, one piece was going to cost me 4000 at the furniture store. See, this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. You have to be in it. Know how it works. Then you are able to take advantage. And guess who else has that same furniture? Nobody. Yeah, let's just put it that way. Nobody. Because when you go to the furniture store, one piece cost four grand 20 years ago, which would be probably six or seven grand right now. That's how crazy this is. One piece. That was the bar with a bottom table to it. Then you start adding up the other pieces when they want like two grand for the end tables and all this stuff. How many people do you think going to have that in their house? Hardly anybody. Nobody has ever seen that stuff ever. But you couldn't order it unless you were a furniture company. And so therefore, if the furniture company never has it, you can't buy it. But if you know where to buy things, you have specialty items that nobody else can see or now there's no timeline on your home or your furniture. Okay, I've talked about this before. Hello, fam. Yes, and she says 2,200 square feet, three bedrooms. Oh, nice, three baths, a very nice Sabana unit. So again, she's, I don't know. Nadine, what are you doing with your furniture? Are you going to uh, have to, are you out there looking for furniture? You're going to go the custom furniture route? Are you going to go buy furniture? And I don't even know where. I'm UL or I know you're not going to Ikea. The place that you're, you're in Savannah, you can't go to Ikea. So what are you going to do for furniture? I'm curious. What is anybody going to do? We have other homeowners who bought villas and condos. Uh, Paul Castillo is going to wait and see what we can come up with. That would be advisable. But villas, what are you guys going to do? You're going to do something crazy? Gonna do something crazy because some people have an advantage. If you live in the Dominican Republic, Ariam Kaye has Kaye has an advantage. Jawe J has an advantage. They already are in doing business on the island. So they have an advantage and they probably speak the language as well. So these little things that I'm saying, you can actually go to the go to the port and you can maneuver and talk to people and they'll tell you, yeah, man, when we have stuff left over, it goes to X. This is where it goes to. And then you just go over there and be like, hey, I understand you guys get the furniture that comes off the boat that nobody uh, gets and comes and gets. And they're like, yeah. And then it's like they're just holding it like storage. But I mean, they have a showroom, but it's like, who knows to go there? Let's get real. And, they're, and, and furthermore, you're in the Dominican Republic. And who's really buying furniture at two, three G's for sofas and couches and things like that, right? Sure, there's some people, but now who knows to go there to get it? They're not advertising. So if you get that connection, then now you can get your furniture at a, you can do damage. You can make, you can do things that is spectacular and people obviously are going to be like, damn, where, where did this stuff come from? And you're like, nobody else is going to have it. Nobody else is ever going to see it. And it's only going to be seen here. All right. It's that simple. Yes. Listen to you. <laughs> Listening to you. There you go, Nadine. Good. Uh, and by the way, Nadine, when's your Sabana going to be delivered? Because being out there doesn't appear. It's not this year. I don't even know if it's going to be next year. So is delivery sometime at the end of next year? Because the way they're doing it is almost hand to hand. So and these are big villas. These are not. I mean, <laughs> man, that 5000 square foot villa is off the charts. I was just like, they're actually building this here. Um, but these villas are not anything to mess with. They're huge. Uh, the walls are thick. They're making them custom. People are doing all kind of stuff. And they're like, okay. So are you going to have delivery in 2024 or 2025? Because to me, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's like not one. I don't think one villa was done. I don't see how they could do it. They're, <laughs> it's crazy. It's not anything bad. It's just that they, they're making things custom. Somebody said, take out my kitchen or make me a second kitchen instead of a bedroom because it's that bedroom's right by the pool. So I'm going to put a kitchen, a second kitchen here and build another bedroom over there. I was just like, you do custom work? 
I was like, oh, that changes the whole game over here. You're making these nice big villas and they're custom or semi-custom? Man, it's pretty major. It's pretty major. Okay, she's saying hers is going to be July. I don't think it's going to happen. But it might be a delay this July. I think so, Nadine. I don't, I don't recall any building being nearly done. I don't think any, I don't think there's nothing that's going to be July. I, at least I didn't see anything. But then again, I wasn't really looking. But as I recall, there was hardly any buildings that were near done. And it takes about five to six months just to do windows, the interior, put in your floors and do the seat. And remember, these ceilings are like, damn, they're, they're huge. The ones, the homes we were in were like 30, 35 feet high. So it ain't like you can just go up there and do stuff. You got to have scaffolding inside. You got to, it's pretty serious. I can't see seven months. Uh, there, there's, I, I can't see it. I just can't see it. Painting, if you have pools, there's nobody that they can do their, their pools yet because they're moving all kinds of materials around. I just don't see seven months. That's not going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I would expect a delay, quite frankly. They do extra. They ordered the floors, etc. Yeah. Yeah, they do extra. You're right about that. So you have special floors that you ordered instead of just their uh, normal floor. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And they're putting stonework on people's homes. So they have the concrete and they're putting stonework. I mean, it's it's impressive, but it's semi-custom. So there's, you can't just build these in a quick fashion. And the square footage is just outrageous in itself. Two levels. 30 foot, 25 foot ceilings, uh, special maids quarters. I saw all kinds of things. People are putting in a maids quarters. Then they said, ah, take this out. We want a full blown one bedroom instead of a maids quarters back here. We want a one bedroom. And the washer and dryer has to move up front because we don't want this little maids room. We're going to take that washer and dryer room and make that a full bathroom. So move the washer and dryer room even further forward. They're doing all kind of custom stuff there. I was impressed. I was like, damn, these homes are going to be valuable. <laughs> That's all I know. They're going to be very valuable. We're talking probably, uh, yeah, they'll be over a million dollars, a lot of them. Not all, but a lot. That it might be December 30th, and it might be December 30th. <laughs> Um, I would believe one year. I just can't see seven months. From what I saw out there, I don't recall any building being nearly done. Every wind, I don't recall a building having uh, windows in it. I don't recall any building having its whole uh, roof done for the whole building. I don't, I don't recall any of that. And no building was done with uh, floors or, or, kitchens being done or anything so i don't know how they're gonna they're not doing that in seven months that's for sure not gonna happen they're not gonna be able to build that and do the interior in let's say now eight months that's not gonna happen so delivery july whatever i would seriously i it's not gonna happen extra work is post possession i believe oh uh are you doing uh is it uh grayed out I mean, why do post possession? They, if you're gonna, um, they haven't put the floors in yet. All I mean is, no reason to let them put in that other stuff if you, if it's you. And let's just say for everybody, if you want something special, it'd be better if you just tell them to put it in when they're putting it in. If they would do that, not everybody would do that. Maybe a problem. But I would be trying to push for it. I'd be saying, hey, man, I'm going to have it delivered. Instead of putting in this tile, put in that. It's the same work, similar, same type of thing. The guys who are tiling can do it, whether it's a 12 by 12, or 18 by 24, it doesn't really matter. It's the same method. So I would try to get it done then because you know the other side of the coin, if it's already in, you're going to have to take out the other stuff, which means demolition. You're charged for demolition, generally. First thing. All right. So keep that in mind. So once again, you're you're creating 
a two step. So you you have to do demolition. Then after you do demolition, you got to prep the floor again to put on the newer stuff. And and there's other things. So here's the here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> this, oh my god. Uh, think about this. What if the floors aren't level? What if there's a crack that you don't know about, but now because you took up everything, you found a crack. Now you're going to be like, oh, damn, we got to seal that. Now we have to level this. We have to float this. And because this wasn't level and it was off just a little bit, we got to float this. Now you're into more money. So me personally, I'm just like, dudes, get this thing proper from the get go. Just set it up. Because I don't really want to do demolition. Anything can happen during demolition to get off uh, old tile because you have to crack it up most of the time. So I'm just saying if we're talking about tile work, just be careful. Extra work is post-possession. Um, that's too bad. Well, I got time for shopping. Yes, you do have time for shopping. It's not going to be done. In fact, when I go there, I will go see Nestor again. I might go out there just just so I can see if if I knew what lot number you had, um, because they do have markers. So if I knew what lot number you had, I can go out there and uh, take video for you. It's not blocked off. I mean, it's blocked off where I can't get in if I'm an individual. But if I'm with Nestor, we can go in and then I can actually take video for you. And let you uh, see, because we might have even been in your house for all I know, because I got video at, at Saban. I haven't released it yet. Um, and it had, in fact, it has names or, or I, in fact, they have names, I think, on some of the markers for the homes. And since you were so early, one of your homes might have the marker. Because there was a few homes that have markers on them with people's name or last name or or there's a reference of some sort. Um let me see if I can uh, go to some of the videos. I'll show you what I'm referring to. In fact, yeah, here goes. What's the name of yours? I don't know, but look, this is the marker at Sabana. See, it says Appaloosa. I don't know by name the sizes, but that's Appaloosa at Sabana. And let's see, this one doesn't have a name. It just says Lot 8. Parcel M1. So, and and by the way, look in the back. See, they put stone on theirs. See, they had that in, and not my favorite, but that's their choice. Uh, it's just rocks to me, but they're putting stone facade on the front facade. Um, so I should have went sideways, but look at these ceilings. Now, remember, we're like six feet. I'm holding it up. So we're about six, five, six, six level. This is like 30 feet high. These are insane. These are insane. Look how thick this look. Look at this. Now, clearly, this cannot be done in seven months, right? Not going to be done in seven months. Clearly not going to be done in seven months. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Here we go. We're in the back of the building. Not going to be completed in seven months. All right. No way. No way. Not going to happen. Just to give you an idea. Um, let me see. Do I have any more of these? Uh, damn. I didn't take any more pictures. thought I took more than that. Well, I just transferred some video over. Hopefully, I have more of that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have more than that because I don't have 5,000 square foot house. So I had some pictures that moved around. I just transferred into my SD card because my regular internal memory was shoddy. It was shot. So let me see if I can come up with something else pretty quick here. Nah, I have other video of Sabana, though. So does Mo, is in fact, and so does E. White. So does George. Everybody has video at Sabana. I have some more somewhere. So one of these days I'll, oh, she's got Appaloosa. There you go. Here we go. Appaloosa. Okay. So that's the one we were at. So this is the one that we were at that they're putting on stone 
on the outside. I guess if somebody asked for this type of stone. But yeah, this is it. Appaloosa, lot number eight. So if you own lot number eight, this would be you. Parcel M1. That would be you. And so now I'll uh, break this out. That's the ceiling right now. If you think this is going to be done in seven months, you're it's not going to happen. No way. Not going to happen. And this is the back of it. No way. Seven months, no way. So um, that's all I have, unfortunately, just those three at Appaloosa. But I have video. Oh, I know why. I know why. Uh, some of it's video. Which, you know, walk through video. We have video. Yeah, I forgot. It's on video, probably. Let's see. Yep, it's on video. Oh, I'm about to show you guys a little vid video when we're out here walking around. This is not Appaloosa, though. This is the 5,000 square foot house. We're talking, walking around. You see the guys. Look, the stables. The corral and the 5,000 square foot house. Clearly, this will not be done anytime soon. All right. Not done anytime soon, ladies and gentlemen. See all of us walking around. Chit chats. He says 5,000 square feet. This is at Sabana. 5,000 square foot house. I thought this was the front of the house. Walking into a courtyard. Wrong. It's the back of the house. <laughs> it's funny as hell. I was like, oh, okay. So the pool and everything's going to, sitting area is all going to be back here. And it's two levels and it's over 5,000 square feet. Crazy. So I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but that's, uh, we're going inside, checking it out. Impressive. All custom. So there you go, Appaloosa. So we know which one she has. Eric, do you know if these projects, Landmark Cruise Land, are being built with hurricane-proof windows? Uh, no. What I mean is yes and no. Figure it out. Yes, Laramar said hurricane-proof windows. Cruise on land? I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Laramar said yes. So she has M54. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let me, I, I, I take papers with me. Because, you know, as I get older, I can't remember everything. So next time I'm there, I'll go see M54. We'll stop at M54. And we'll see what it looks like. Oh, she says she added an extra balcony. Out of curiosity, how much did they charge you for the extra balcony? Um, that's the curiosity of it all, if you remember. Mine has an extra balcony. Yes. The big ones are getting built now. Yeah, exactly. They're too big. Really, they are. I am the opposite sides of that big one. One on one the side of the store. I don't know where the store is, though. Or do you mean stables? I'm on the opposite side of that big one. Okay, so you're across the street. Is that what you're saying? That would make sense. What were we at? We were at M. Oh, we were at M1. So, yeah, you're one of the first people. So you're like four down. So we were in the vicinity. And in fact, we were over. So we were at M1. Then we went next door, which was interesting as well. Then it started raining. So that's what kind of made it. It started drizzling and stuff. So that made it kind of short. Um, but some of the guys might have some more video. So she's across the street. 
Okay. The house across the street. Wait a minute. Oh, I don't have. Oh, if I play the video longer, I'll have video. I, I'll have it. We were in the, the kitchen is up front, apparently, or the front door is up front. We're standing there. So I did a glance across the street. So that would actually show your video. Um, this video is more than a minute. It's a, uh, let's see. And I think George probably has videos or Mo probably has videos because they were out there checking it out. Let's see if we got lucky real quick for Nadine here. I might have the video across the street. Let's see if I have it. Oh, wait, I might have it already. Hold on a second. I think I do. Hold on, hold on. This is going to be interesting. Oh, there it is. I think I got it, Nadine. Just a second. How do you stop this stuff? Oh, I know why it's not stopping. I don't, I'm not even playing it. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. I think you might be in luck. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. Hold on. Let's see if we can get there. Nadine, would this be you across the street? That could be you across the street. I don't know. So that could be you across the street because that is across the street. Let's go look at something here. Why is that doing that? That's weird. I've never seen that before. Oh, this is video. So you're just like the other Appaloosa if this is across the street. Definitely not going to be done in seven months. Definitely won't be done in July. I don't, uh, that's my opinion. I mean, who knows? They could do something crazy. We will see. I got you. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we got more. Hold on a second. Okay, here's George, and now my phone went dark, but here's George, and also across the street to the left are these buildings. Another apple, and I think, was that where we were at earlier? So yeah, it's in the first row, if that's you. Trees, yes, she says. There you go. There you go. No neighbors. Yeah, she says that's her unit across the street. Man, talk about talk about luck. That is wild. There are some trees in the middle, tress in the middle. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Trees. Yep. OK, so that is your summer back in the street. No neighbors. Cool. OK, trees. Yes. Oh, she says, but uh, but cannot see where that is. OK, yes. I think so. Well, if it's across this, that's across the street from, well, it's a little on the diagonal side, not directly across the street. It was diag. In other words, if it was a lot over and that looks like an Appaloosa straight ahead. So I don't know how, when you say in, near the front of the house, I don't know if you mean directly in front of the house or somewhat like catty corner or diagonal, but anyhow, that was diagonal. Uh, so if we're standing at the front, um, and I'm at the front door at the 5,000 um, square foot one. When I turn around, you're going to be on the, uh, you're in front, but it's like a next lot over on the left side. When I turn around and I'm facing the road and facing you, it'll be on the left side. If you're on the right side or straight ahead, I don't have pictures of that unless probably I get into three minutes. I probably have video. But next time I'm there, I'll actually just go specifically go look and do a walkthrough, you know. As long as uh, Nestor takes me through, I'll be good. I'll just stop there and say, hey, we got to go to M5, lot four. We were at lot eight. So now we were down the way at lot four would be four doors down. Let's see what she says. I am not back in the street, but facing the store. And the park that will be built on the corner, no house beside of me. Oh, so she's on the other side. That's where she's at. I think. I think she's on the other side. I mean, on the other side of the 5,000. So that would probably be right. Because if we were at M8, we'd have to go four lots down. 
So she's on the other side of the house. So she's near that house. I think I know where she is now. We'll see when I go there. We'll, uh, I'll put it on my list. So I have it down. We'll go check it out. Has extra balcony. We'll go see what they're doing with that too. And how much did they charge you for the extra balcony though? Yep, in the middle. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It was another lot, uh, two lots over. So I think that would put you two lots over to the right. So, yeah, we were there. And like I said, uh, one of the guys might have video out on the street. In fact, I know we, oh, it started raining when we were in M8. When we were in the first Appaloosa, that's when it started drizzling. So inside we were fine. But when we came outside, it was drizzling. So that's why we didn't walk down the street. We were like just getting in the car and drove to the 5,000 square foot. And it wasn't really raining. It's just a little drizzle. But we weren't out there too long. We just went inside and started, you know, doing stuff. So, but we will see where cars will be passing to go to the stable. Yeah, we know where the stables are. I, I know where, I think I know where you're at right now. If you if I'm facing uh, I'm at that 5,000 square foot place, it's not on the left. You're going to be on the right. The stables are right behind that 5,000 square foot house directly. Well, and there's supposedly going to be a little lake there. They said small lake is supposed to be there. And I was like, what? OK, this is kind of weird. I think it's going to be more of a fountain and only be like 20 foot circumference. But they said there's going to be a small lake there. I was like, holy smokes. And then I was like, wait a minute. The stables are right here. Oh, the stables are there because you can smell the horses. It wasn't. You could clearly tell you were by the stables. It was clearly. We were like, wait, what's going on? And, there were, and they were like, there's Tony's. Uh, I, I can't remember who they said. It was one of the owners. They're like, yeah, there's their horses right there. I was like, are you kidding me? So literally, these dudes are going to walk out, be at the corral be at the stables. They're going to be right here. I was like, huh, that is interesting. So if you're down there, then you're right across. You can just walk right to the stables. You can go right to the, to the corral. You can go right to the clubhouse. You're just like right there. I mean, it's not really like right there that close, but you got to walk maybe probably like a hundred yards. You'll be at the clubhouse. The stables are less than 30 yards away. They're right there. Okay. All right. I see what's going on. Yeah, that's that's an interesting location. Yep. Okay. I know where you're at. We can find it because we were already there. If it wasn't raining, then we probably would have had, we would have went to the second Appaloosa or down that way. We would have probably went across the street and started checking out because one of those were different. The other ones, they weren't all Appaloosas. So... We will see for the horses to cool down. I think that's what it was like. The horses were underneath this little shelter. And I was like, what do you mean stables? All I see is like this little place and they're keeping like five or six horses there. But if you want to call it a stable, so be it. <laughs> I'm like, OK, it's not. a. I used to have horses. So I was like, that's not a stable that I would call a stable. But hey, maybe it's that. But yeah, you're right. It was more like. They were just cooling down or keeping them there. It wasn't like a real stable where they had hay or any real. It, it was outside, literally. It just had an overhang, a closure. They were in the elements. It wasn't like a normal stable. So it's all good. They know what's coming. Yeah, near the clubhouse. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you're less than uh, probably 50 to 60 yards away from the clubhouse. You're literally damn near across the street from the stable or place they said the stable is going to be where the little mini lake's going to be you're right there right where you want to be the stable is huge <laughs> i know it has to be there's supposed to be horses there so that was the cool down area that you're referring to because it damn sure wasn't a stable i'll tell you that way that much not a stable um but the pro, but they were saying, yeah, the stable's going to be here, and I'm like, where? The stable, where? I was like, but it, yeah, cool down area is more like it. That's what it looks like, and uh, in some shade. So that's probably what it was. 
that makes much more sense because I was looking for a stable like where? What are you talking about? There's no stable around here. Um, in fact, I might even well, I'm not gonna show anymore. We're gonna wrap this up. All right, because everybody's like, come on, Eric, get on with it. <laughs> no, we had to talk about this. Savannah special, ladies and gentlemen. It's inside Vista Cana, my number two rated project. So we got to talk about that. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Once again, you guys know I love you very much. And make sure you just stay out of trouble. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. And also, make sure you stay out of trouble. We've talked about this several times, but have a good night. And hopefully, I will see you in the DR next year. Somewhere in April or May, we're going to be there again with the SSN Nation and Real Estate Investor and Business Forum, full-blown, two or three days, maybe four, special location on the beach. It's going down. But again, wait till I come back. Everything's going to be set up because I might be doing just more than setting that up. There might be some other things going. This would entail the big boys coming. Artists on the charts coming to hanging it's gonna be special i have a feeling but i still got to get it all right we're gonna find out in the next 14 days so stay tuned i'm a little excited these guys woke me up from my slumber i was like okay you woke me up now we're gonna make things happen okay and with all that said make sure you keep your head up keep moving and i'm out